This is A View from the Bunker. Now, here's Derek Gilbert. Elevator Pitch. The X-Files meets the Book of Revelation. Watch this. This is the Paul Revere Network. Resist. You are not alone. Do not give in. The FBI is closer to identifying the broadcasting location of what the true believers call their Paul Revere Network. There are questions about the mRNA in the vaccine. Does this affect a person's DNA? Captain, there's something you should know. Divorced, no children. If we can take down the network, we can take down the extremists. Sahin. What language is that that he's even speaking? Bahara. I don't know, the AI can't translate it. Babashi. Sahin. What does that mean? It means evangelist. Law enforcement continues their search for Sergeant John Rhodes, who assaulted a doctor and fled the state hospital while in custody. He's considered armed and dangerous. Prepare the injection. Robert Shaw, we have reason to believe that he is in possession of some highly classified documents from the CDC. Shaw. It's a janitor. Somehow he got his hands on a hard drive that... It contains sensitive information. A court of sensitive information. When's the last time you saw Officer book? It's been almost a week now. The side effects have been more than anticipated. Uh, to receive Life a mark on their right death. hands or on their foreheads. Welcome to A View from the Bunker. I'm Derek Gilbert. Joining me tonight is a gentleman who is the director, producer, writer of this uh, series. He is um, taking on a big project because producing something that uh, looks that with that level of production values on the budget that he's been working with requires somebody who's actually trained to do this sort of thing for many, many years. Uh, he has, and he's done quite well, actually, as you can see by the trailer. This is the last Evangelist television series. Episode two is just about to drop. Episode one is available to watch right now. We'll talk about where you can see that soon. He is uh, really a renaissance man. He's uh, a musician. He is an actor, director, writer, producer. Uh, actually, he is now an award-winning director, the International New York Film Festival, which was just this past weekend as we're recording this, uh, winner of two Diamond Globe Awards for Best Inspirational Series for The Last Evangelist and Best Director. It's our honor to welcome back to the program, David Hebner. David, uh, <clears throat> congratulations. Thanks, Derek. Thanks. You know more about it than I do. <laughs> You're an investigator, <laughs> of course. <laughs> good, well, I good, know how to use a search reason. engine. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, thank you. It's so good to be with you. I'm honored. Uh, and uh, I, I know that um, God's going to do some great things during this time together with you and I, as, he do, as he's done in the past. So thank you for having me. Well, it's uh, it, what, what you're doing with The Last Evangelist is the kind of thing that, that Sharon, especially, and me in a small way, have tried to do with just the written word. And that is uh, mm -hmm. try to tell stories that will help those who may be fearful at what they see happening in the world around us. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and and show them that there are biblical answers to this. But clearly, yeah. if you can tell that with a visual, uh, the, you know, so they, they say a picture's worth a thousand words, and uh, a well, well-told story visually allows people to engage even more deeply in, in some cases than uh, with the written word. Uh, so the, the Last yeah. Evangelist and what we see in the trailer for the second episode, you're really drawing on very recent headlines and how and really projecting not that far into the future to show people what uh, may be coming. Yeah, you know, Derek, just to take people back, episode one was released about a year and a half ago. And uh, it, I play a cop where I bust underground churches for not registering with the government because there's this virus that broke out. And uh, uh, so I would. Uh, so one night I hear God's voice after I arrest arrest this Bible study. I go blind. And I start seeing things and realizing things. I start waking up and watching. And so with the Bible in one hand, a gun in the other, I take off just to find out what's going on. The guy, my character doesn't turn into a, quote, Christian 
but he's seeking truth, right? So in episode two, there's two kinds of people, the kind that either took the, the, the insertion, the, um, the vaccine, uh, have you, uh, have you, or they didn't, and they can't buy or sell. So there's these two groups of people. So this is where we are in episode two, Derek, um, and you saw from the trailer. But you know what's really wonderful about this is that I'm able to get into people that don't nor, not only go to church, but they may be atheists, they may be another uh, belief system, a Jew, a Muslim, Jehovah's Witness. And that night at the New York Fil International Film Festival, I have to tell you, uh, my wife said when they were getting ready to announce the awards, she goes, honey, you need to put something on nice. I said, I'm not getting an award. Are you kidding me? This is last evangelist about as politically incorrect, about as religiously, you know, uh, out there. I mean, forget it. So I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I hear my name and I hear last evangelist. I went, oh, my goodness. So it's like uh, I go up, I take it. Here's the good thing. I got to stand in front of all these people, you know, because you get to make a speech once you get an award, right? And I said, you know what, everybody, there are directors, there are writers, there are people in the industry that I could thank, but I want to thank the executive producer, my heavenly father above, who is the executive producer. I said, without him, none of this would be possible. And that opened up a conversation afterwards at the party of people come up and said, executive producer? I'd never heard that terminology. What? And so I got to share the gospel. And of course, then the second thing is they call me up as best director. And I'm going, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And I got to talk about who's directing my life. Who is the director in our life? The Holy Spirit. You see what I'm saying? So um, I was just waiting for him to call best writer. And then I was said, it's Jesus Christ, you know. So, so um, <laughs> yeah, so it's an opportunity, Derek, to go into Hollywood and into the, to the creative community and to talk about God in a way that I don't think they've really maybe heard about God, right? Hmm. This was not a... A, a film festival specifically for Christian video, Christian uh, film projects, Christian television series. So to receive the kind of recognition uh, as best director is is really significant. But um, even even as best inspirational series, because I think when a lot of people think of an inspirational series, they'll think about uh, uh, well, for example, The Chosen or something like that, which is uh, right. a little more right. straightforward in a presentation of a biblical story um, as opposed to the last evangelist, which is really sort of like, you know, the X files meets uh, the book of revelation. I think uh, that, that may have been your description if I remember correctly, but uh, right. I think that's an accurate description. Um, what, what sort of response do you get from Christians seeing this? <laughs> okay. It's funny you would ask because in this huge room of people that I'm, talking they did a question and answer after they did the screening and most people there were not believers it could have been some atheists they were believers in different religions and so forth but the few christians that were there there was a there was a couple of that said you know man this is really but then i had one christian say this is hard to watch this is hard to watch and derek this sums up the condition of the church with their head in the sand, they say, it's too hard to watch. And you know mm -hmm. what I said to him? I said, well, today you're watching it. Tomorrow you could be in it. And all of a sudden the room started. You could hear that buzz going around the room, you know. And this is the problem. The church, the church I'm talking about, the, 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 the lukewarm church, the sleepy church, it's hard for them to to process this. It's hard for them to get their hands around it. And I, I, and my fear that they don't because they're going to lose congregation, which means they're going to lose money. So that's one problem. Um, but the other side of it is there are a group of people like you and I and Sharon and, and the crowd that we run in. We embrace this. We want to know more. We And there are people out there who are hungry. And they want to know more because we're talking about things the church won't talk about. So there's two groups of Christians, the kind that seek the truth, they're hungry, the kind that are fat fed and they don't think they need anything. And they will either remain silent or they'll push back.
Mm. The insertion is uh, just the beginning. That's the tagline on the promotional poster for episode two. Uh, you've got a. Uh, we'll we'll talk about the the premiere event coming up at uh, Harvest Revival Center just outside Dayton, Ohio, in a couple of weeks. But uh, the insertion. Um, how far into the pandemic was it before you realized that this was a trial run for the mark? Well, I wrote the script three years before the pandemic ever broke out. Ah, okay. Um, Yeah, and at that time, it was a sci-fi movie. People would read it and say, oh, you're doing a sci-fi series. I said, no. So when it finally happened, it was real. So um, what it is, this insertion, first of all, you have the vaccine, but the vaccine is 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 null and void for the most part unt- unless they can get this insertion inside of you. It's the insertion which drives the mRNA, which drives the the um, the ingredients of the vaccine. Without giving too much of the story away, uh, so they must get this insertion inside of people. Um, so first comes the vaccine, and then comes the insertion because the insertion is a way of. Um, it's it, it, it's it's ease. You can get things done. Things are a lot quicker. You can download your passport. You can you know, that we have what we call the Vaxport in the TV series. Um, and so it's of convenience. And this is what is happening now, Derek. You know this. You're on the cutting edge. And it's what's going to be coming down the pike big time. Uh, and people go, no, that this ain't going to happen. Well, it, in Sweden, they started it several years ago. And uh, they have this new ID they're coming out with that you must have next year. Okay, the real ID. Uh, And this is just the beginning. Yeah, it's uh, again, it's not that far advanced from where we were during the high point of the panic during the uh, pandemic, where people without your vaccine passport or proof of vaccine, uh, people were losing their jobs. People were blocked from entering stores. Um, you know, here in the Ozarks, we were kind of in a bubble. We went through a couple of months where things were a little bit restricted, but then by the fall of 2020, things were starting to open up again. I was still, uh, I was taking my mother, my elderly mother out to, uh, to lunch every Friday at the restaurant that she likes. And, um, I told our daughter about this up in St. Louis and she was like, Oh no, because she's living in a different world there. Right. Uh, and, right. But, and, and I think a lot of a lot of people who are living in, in bigger cities, especially in more liberal parts of the country, uh, understand exactly what I'm saying. There was a, a fear that was oppressive, a spirit that was almost oppressive when you went into those areas. Um, it would not take a whole lot to get back to that. In fact, uh, Sharon's been keeping an eye on H5N1, the avian flu which she's been doing for a long time. In fact, that inspired her novel, The Armageddon Strain, back in 2003, which we're republishing now because it's more relevant than it was back then. Um, Right. So this, uh, as people are saying, this is hard to watch. Are they finding it so because they feel it hits too close to home or because they've not looked at the book of Revelation? The second. um, I don't think it hits too close to home. I think it's the second. It, it's hard for them to watch because they have a different kind of a Jesus. They have a cotton candy Jesus. They have a mm-hmm. Jesus that is um, uh, love, but the wrong kind of love, or it's it's misguided love. Uh, they have uh, an easy Christianity, um, and so they, it's hard for them to accept the fact. You know, it's funny. They don't read Matthew 24. If they do, they just gloss over it, okay? I ask preachers, I go, well, how many preachers hate you? And I, well, I don't want to be hated. I said, well, evidently you must be do, doing something wrong because Jesus said they're going to hate me. you. They hated me, you know. Um, so they say it's hard to watch because it's kind of like someone dying of cancer, but they're in denial, so they don't want to talk about it, you know. And uh, and, and this is the, the strange thing about it is I thought that going to studios at the beginning, they didn't want to hear about this because it had God in it. Uh, but now Christians, I'm talking about the, the, the churchy Christians, they don't want to hear about it because it's got the real God in it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So where do you go? You know, where do you go? You know, we set up a website called lastevangelist.com where people, people could donate. And the comments I get in the donations, it may not be m- big donations, maybe $5, $10, but they'll say, you keep going, brother. 
you keep going. We're, we're pushing for you. So that means the little guy, the little people are now behind it. You know, they're the ones willing to take the hits. They're the willing, ones willing to lay down their life. I find that it's the big mega churches that seem to be numb, numb when it comes to end times prophecy, and e especially things like this, which dives even deeper, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, how does the story progress, again, without giving too much away, from um, episode one, which shows the transformation of your character from persecutor of the church to going underground as, uh, you know, to in search of the truth. Uh, how does how do we see his character develop in, in uh, episode two? Yeah, you know, people think, well, now he's got a Bible in one hand, a gun in the other. He's either going to preach people to death or he's going to shoot them to death. You know, maybe a little bit of both. Uh, neither happens. Neither happens. He's a man in search of truth, Derek. You know, when we search for truth, uh, especially someone that's really uh, discerns the truth, they will be very careful and very cautious because there's a lot of deception out there. So our character, John Rhodes, is constantly meeting, meeting deception. So he's constantly busy dodging the bullets, you might say. I'm talking, you know, as a metaphor. So where his character is going, where his arc is going, is taking the audience into his world through his eyes. Remember, he went blind, and now he can see. He sees things others can't. And that's us as Christians. We see things that the world can't see. At least we're supposed to for Christians, right? So right, I right. we take him through a journey of he's seeing things that uh, that others can't see. I don't want to give the story away, but that leads right. him into a place of big pharma, of what's really going on uh, underground in big pharma. Meanwhile, you have in episode three, the AI Bible, the new government Bible, and the new AI Jesus based uh, upon hate speech, you know? Right. And so that's where we're going with all this. So it's really more about, I mean, he does, he is getting closer to God. He is searching truth, but it's really taking the audience through the things that can really happen that are actually happening now, you know, because mm. if he can't become a Christian and threw away his gun and just stood on a street corner preaching to people, well, you're not going to take the audience anywhere except on a street corner. Right. And so, uh, yeah, that, this is this is where 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 our character uh, is going with this. Uh, by the way, if you see me uh, moving around in my chair here, it's because Grace, the rescue dog, is uh, deciding that she's needing more attention here. So uh, forgive me if oh. I appear distracted at times. I'm listening to everything, but uh, she's she's close to sixty pounds now, and if she tries to get up on my lap here, it's going to be it's it's not going to have a good result. Um, people who want to see, I have a part episode... for her in a movie. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll put on the movie, so. <laughs> she she is really really good at defending the home yard i will tell you that she and her sidekick glory the rescue dog uh the, the two of them together uh yeah they ran off a couple of dogs that were uh, wandering around uh just uh, this afternoon um yeah episode two is going to premiere on july 20th it's a couple of a uh, couple of saturdays from now uh, 6 p.m eastern time in uh Brookline, I keep saying Brookline, is Brookville, Ohio, uh, the Harvest Revival Center, mm -hmm. Pastor Neil Peterson's church. Uh, how do people um, uh, reserve a spot and, and see? And I got to say, this will be a great place to see it because that screen at the front of that, uh, uh, the, the front of that sanctuary is going to be an awesome place to screen the uh, the episode. Yeah, it's amazing. Yes, they can go to davidhevener.tv right there on the website. They can sign a form. Tickets in person are 20 bucks. If you want to go online virtual, you'll get the, the same experience. Well, not the same, but you'll get to experience everything, the red carpet and everything. They're $15. Uh, it, it will support the ministry. It'll help us make ep finish episode three and go into episode four. Um, so please uh, go there, davidheavener.tv, or you can text the word CHOSEN to 91999, or you can call 844-806-0006. Um, and Derek, by the way, they can, even though we're going to screen episode one and two, they can go to David Hevner TV right now and watch episode one. We have over 700 videos. A lot of the videos you're in, I'm inter interviewing you. We have uh, 20 channels. And, uh, and by the way, I want to publicly uh, thank you and Sharon for supporting this cause in this ministry. Uh, I've known you for quite some time. 
and you've been a, a, a great friend. You've been a member of the of the channel, and you've also been a partner in these interviews. And I want to thank you very much. Well, again, we're very excited about the project, and that's why we want to get the word out there because this is a means of sharing the gospel that is uh, outside the normal channels. And if we continue doing the yeah. same thing we've always done, um, you know, we see where the church is going. It is shrinking um, <laughs> worldwide, and that's partly because we in the Northern Hemisphere are not having enough babies, but also because our kids and our grandkids are falling away from the faith. Um, so yeah. we need to do something a little differently to reach outside and, and try to bring them in. Um, because you are doing this outside the normal production channels— you don't have big uh, backers in Hollywood that are supporting this. Uh, this is supported in many ways by people who are excited by the concept and want to see this come to fruition. Um, how is your experience as uh, in Hollywood making secular films and being able to do them on a budget? How has that prepared you or trained you for what you're doing right now? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I've learned how to take uh, nothing and make something, as opposed to Hollywood, <laughs> as opposed to Hollywood taking something and making nothing. It's really yeah. made me humble, but I've been able to use my skills uh, through the years. I've made over 50 films, many for HBO, Showtime. And so on this very, very small budget, uh, uh, making these episodes, very humbling. God has sent some great people uh, to team with me. They 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 love the project. Many of them are atheists. I have one transsexual that came on the set. Uh, they didn't know what was going on. It was their first time there. They ended up praying with us, praying over a meal. Um, you know, it's a great ministry platform for people. You know, to to do this. But to answer your question is. It's very difficult, but I will continue on until either the Lord comes or he tells me not to do it anymore. Uh, but I, now I know why he's made, had me make so many movies uh, with money. I've had big budgets. I mean, not $100 million, but, but millions of dollars. And But he's, he's taught me how to do it. But, you know, here's the funny thing. Think about this. Um, in this competition of uh, New York International Film Festival, the, the biggest budget they looked at was $50 million dollars. $50 million, which did not get an award. Yet, Last Evangelist, Last Evangelist gets two awards, right? I'm talking this little humble, little TV series that is, you know, pasted together and, you know, whatever, I, I say that respectfully, gets an award. And, you know, it's almost like it's supernatural, right? And and I said to one of the people there at the party, I said, um, you know, we did get an award. I said, I don't know why they gave us an award. I was being, and you know what the person said to David? I'm not a Christian, but I've seen Christian movies. And the reason you got the award is because yours is good quality for a change. And it's serious stuff. It's not goofy. It's not cheesy. So we don't have, it, you know, hold the cheese and, and, and get good quality. And that's what really works. Right. You know, I, uh, uh, I wonder if that isn't uh, sort of an expectation among some who view Christian content, the expectation that if it's too high quality, if the production values are too high, that somehow it's not legitimate, it's not sincere, it's not anointed. I, I, I don't know, because uh, I, I know at Skywatch well, TV, some of, the, some of the trailers that Joe Horn yep. has put together for some of the books that Tom Horn has done over the years, DVDs, are, are really, really good. And we will occasionally get some pushback saying that's just too slick. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, 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 well, I think that's I think that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. It is. Well, I tell you what you're dealing with. What you're dealing with is if people see where there's a lot of money, it's not that they're judging it. What happens usually the more money you bring into it, the less control you have of the project. So the more apostate and deception is in the project. OK, oh. I'll say that again. The bigger the budget. The more players you have, the more restrictions there are on the script to tell the story. They water it down, even to the point of deception. So what happens is someone sees it, and it's a big budget, and it looks good, but man, there's no meat, right? There's no meat. Um, it, it, but the, uh, what you said is also true. If it's too slick, 
that's why people like YouTube. You know, on YouTube, you can't go too slick because they think you got a lot of money and they won't. They, they think, you know, you're lying to them. Uh, but in all honesty, uh, what happens, these, uh, the scary part is when you have a big budget and it looks like Christianity, smells like Christianity, but it's not Christianity. Yeah, That's, yeah. Those are the movies that concern me the most. I, I hear you. Um, how far do you hope to take the story? I mean, we, we can kind of look at this as uh, there are parallels clearly in uh, John Rhodes' character and the Apostle Paul he has a sort of Damascus Road experience where he's blinded, then sees again, now on the search for truth, just as Paul had to go to Damascus. Then he went to Arabia to find out, and then he went to Jerusalem to meet with uh, with Peter and James to find out if what he'd been taught in Damascus was true. Um, but set in the end times now, uh, and in present day or near future, how far in the future do you hope to take the story? Well, it'll, it'll always be in the present of what's happening, but I... I hope to take it at least 20 years, however many episodes we can squeeze out of that. Because remember, it's always relevant to what is happening today in society, politically, um, re religi religion, uh, um, uh, the, the financial uh, realm. It's all, all of that. And, and I'm hoping, just like we're going to have a financial reset, uh, Derek, I believe in the not too distant future, and I've got an episode five which deals with that. With there's no longer uh, paper money, and what's that hmm. going to look like in the sky's world? Now remember, you're still dealing with half of society suffering from a you know whatever, and now you throw in the reset, you know. So um, I, I hope to keep taking it as far as it, the Lord will let me to tell the stories that need to be tell, told with the Bible prophecy meets the current events according to the truth of Scripture. You know it's. <laughs> it's like reading just a, a near-term projection of where we are right now. I mean, bringing in artificial intelligence, bringing in the reset, bringing in a central bank digital currency, and uh, yeah. you know, more physical money. Um, these are all things that are happening around us right now. Um, yeah. How, it, how, how do you d dive into all of this stuff without just getting overwhelmed and saying, there's just, there's just too much? How do I work all of this into compact, concise storytelling? Well, I think you have to. I'm a big fan of Rod Sterling of the Twilight Zone. Yep. Um, um, I, I study his uh, his um, his approach to film, his writing. He's a great writer, by the way. Rod Sterling was really a, a, a concept and a writer. Absolutely. Um, and what he did, if you notice in his episodes, he 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 he. It was small. There weren't too many characters, but the characters that were there were very powerful. And you live vicariously through these people. OK, so and it's not because I don't have millions of dollars, Derek, even if I had millions, I, I would really hesitate to, to, to go that road because now you're competing with hundred million dollar, you know, uh, movies that are, you know, apocalyptic. I mean, you know, The Rock and, and you know, the old Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, and, and who wants to go down that road? They've seen that. You know, people have seen all that stuff. It's like if I got to look at that again, I you know, I'm going to watch Shirley Temple. Right. Um, so so what you do is you take a character like mine and you get the audience so involved in, in my character and both the protagonist antagonist that you forget about all the other stuff around. You're more interested in living through those characters and how they respond to one another and get out of their situations and watch their arc. Um, kind of like a, maybe a spiritual soap opera type thing, um, uh, you know, where you're following the characters and you notice in a soap opera, everything that happens to these people happen to real people in real life at the same time, you know. And so that's this is what I'm hoping to to bring across to the audience. And I'm hoping at the end of the day, they'll sit around, they'll have a conversation about it and it will open the door for people like you who want to who go in and talk at conferences. And now they'll allow you to step in and go somewhere where they may not let you go before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, I think that's a brilliant way of approaching it. Um, when you try to go big and you don't successfully build the world around it, it just falls flat and, and you lose the viewer because they are no longer able to suspend disbelief. Uh, but uh, I, I think that was the brilliance of that that movie Cloverfield a few years back 
where it was told, you know, this giant monster, but it was told through the vantage point of the people running away from it, you know, through the, uh, like, found footage, basically. So you were seeing mm-hmm. it from their vantage point, not, you know, the pullback shot with Godzilla versus Kong going at it. Uh, and it uh, made the story that much more terrifying because you saw it from their perspective. Similarly, you see this character who's now caught up in this world that is in the grip of um, a growing antichrist spirit if not the antichrist himself um and i think people will definitely relate to that uh, much better than if you try to pull back and try to tell too big a story and fall flat yeah yeah that that's that's deadly when you don't have a hundred million dollars it's deadly (laughs) even if you have a hundred million it can be deadly because you know if you watch you know people say well this movie was like the end times and it's a big studio movie, $100 million, and I'll watch it, and it's like the end times, but it's not. They leave things out, right? So it's not really. It's, it's, a, it's a poor reflection, and usually those movies never drive people to Christ because they're sensational, um, you know, and there's something else involved in it. So I'm praying with Last Evangelist two things will happen. One is we can reach the people that would not normally go to church, which has been happening through not only just filming it with people on the set, but also people who watch it. But then also, if it gets into more film festivals, which I hope it will, I'm able to stand before an audience of other filmmakers. And they have, there's a huge online uh, uh, audience at these film festivals now. And to be able to proclaim the gospel in that way. You see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So it's a, it's a many-pronged uh way outlet to to get to people and that that's what i'm all about that's what this ministry is all about we we've talked about this before but i want to bring it up again just to address it uh, because i think a lot of us go through things in life and wonder why the lord is allowing these things to happen you know why me why is this why has this relationship fallen apart why did i lose this job why didn't i get that job at what point did you realize that your experience in hollywood making those action films on a budget for HBO was training for what you're doing now. At what point did you realize, ah, this is, this is why the Lord led me down that path? Well, you know, my family, I have family that lived in Israel. Uh, a lot of, many have died off now, but my uncle who came over, he visited me in Hollywood when I was making these movies. And I remember him saying, that's God, that's God. See, he remembers this little kid that was nothing running around with you know, four eyeglasses and being picked on to a guy making, you know, these movies, low budget, yes, but still the hero in these movies starring with Tony Curtis and Martin Landau. And he looked and he said, that's God. Well, I didn't understand exactly what he meant, except he was saying that's God. But now I do. And it, it, that happened back when uh, I started uh, filming and realizing that my my background, my my track record had to be applied to this this last evangelist because of the lack of funds and the lack of this, lack of that. And I remembered my uncle's voice from Israel saying, that's God. And so that's when I realized that Derek, uh, several years ago on the set, when I started filming, uh, realizing that that's why he, because it was supernatural, me going into Hollywood with no money, no connections, not even very much talent, you know, really. I uh, and but yet, you know, some 50 movies later working for, you know, major st- networks. I mean, come on, that does, that doesn't happen to everybody. Even I'll never forget even Tony Curtis. I'm, I'm sitting there with him. We're in between scenes and we had just met met each other on the set. He goes, Heavener, I got one question for you. He goes, the only question I'm probably going to ask you other than for my paycheck. He said, uh, how the heck did you get here? How did you get here? He looked around and goes, how did you do this? You know, they didn't have Google. I mean, they had internet, but nobody used it back then. But they had the Hollywood Reporter and they had this and that. And so he had read stuff about me. But he said, you came out of nowhere. You know, you didn't have a dad that was in the industry. You didn't have multi. How would you do it? And I said, uh, oh, that's God. You know, I remember my, what my uncle said. I said, my uncle said, Tony, that's God. You're a Jew. That's God. Right. Hmm. So, yeah. Well, 
Well, the premiere coming up uh, both online and in person. If you can be there at the uh, Harvest Revival Center in Brookville, Ohio, just outside Dayton, Saturday, July 20th, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find out more information at davidhevener.tv. Also, lastevangelist.com, I imagine. Is that correct? Uh, lastevangelist.com, you can donate uh, to Episode 3, which is what we're finishing okay. up now. Uh, but if you want to buy tickets, davidhevener.tv. If you want to watch episode right now, please go and become a member. We could use your membership. It's very cheap. It's five or six bucks a month and 60, 70 bucks a year. You know, um, that would be that would be also. And by the way, Derek, you're the announcer in it. You're you, you yeah. have your voiceover. Yeah, your voiceover is actually in the trailer, too. Did you catch that? I, I did. I did. Great yeah, job. Going, going back Great to my job. Going back to my early days in radio when I was doing news broadcast, so uh, was able to pull <laughs> that right, back. again, you know, that... to watch out for John yeah. Rhodes because he's armed and dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> once again, <laughs> training for what I'm doing. Well, it's an honor to contribute to it, and we'll put links in the notes below to uh, where you can watch, where you can contribute, where you can find out more about the Last Evangelist and the work of David Hevner. Uh, David. Um, God bless you, brother. We we wish we could be there, but we're going to be at the Harvest Revival Center the following weekend already for the uh, Go Therefore conference. So uh, we will I, be looking in online. That you, yeah, but if I can pipe you in over the screen and you're around, I'll try to get you in over the screen. I'm still working on that, how to pull people in. But uh, thank you, Derek. And remember, we have to legalize Jesus, right? Legalize Amen. Jesus. Amen. Yeah, that's the name of the first episode, Legalize. If they want a T-shirt, then go to davidhevener.tv. Uh, forward slash order. So there you go. All right. David Hevner, uh, thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you again soon at some point. Thank you, Derek. God bless you. Again, in the notes below, you'll find a link to David's website and where you can view episode one of The Last Evangelist, where you can make your reservation to watch episode two, whether it's in person or streamed live. And of course, in episode two, you hear this really uh, professional sounding news announcer in the background. (laughs) Uh, Again, training many years ago. Who knew that it would lead to this? Uh, So please check that out, whether you're watching or listening to this uh, program. Coming up, we will discuss the situation in the Democratic Party because they are in full panic mode after last Thursday's debate. Oh, bless their pointy little heads. That and more as a view from the bunker continues. Giants, gods, dragons, they're all real. We may not see them with our natural eyes, but their handiwork is evident in what's happening in the world around us, the spiritual warfare taking place. It is so true. It's obvious in Israel, but worldwide. Historically, we've seen this happen. And we want you to get excited about the Old Testament and the New and the giants, gods, and dragons within it because your kids need this information. So do you. Yes. We're living in prophetic times. Help make sense of it with our special offer through July. Our book, Giants, Gods, and Dragons, which takes a fresh look at end times prophecy. My book's Bad Moon Rising about the spiritual forces behind Islam and Last Clash of the Titans, the overlap between what we were told is Greek mythology and the Bible, and our DVD based on the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. All of this in $80 value for just $45 plus shipping and handling. Now through July, only at our online store, gilberthouse.org slash store. Hi friends, Pastor Mike Spalding here to announce the Go Therefore 2024 conference. We will gather Friday and Saturday, July the 26th and 27th at Harvest Revival Center in Brookville, Ohio. This year we welcome the following scholars, Bible teachers and researchers, Derek and Sharon Gilbert, Joe Horn, L.A. Marzulli, Dr. Judd Burton, Pastor Paul Bagley, Pastor Carl Gallops, Dr. Greg Reed, Tom Dunn, and Dr. Sherry Tenpenny will be doing a book signing for her new book, Walking with God. Live stream is available. Ministry tables are available for like-minded ministries. Hotel and other information is on the conference website, www. Go therefore conference.com. Go therefore conference.com. Looking forward to seeing you. Drive-
driving the internet to think every Sunday night from the beautiful Missouri Ozarks. This is A View from the Bunker. I'm Derek Gilbert. You'll find us online at vftb.net. That's the podcast website. Our main web hub for all that we do, sharing to me, that is gilberthouse.org, gilberthouse.org, derekpgilbert.com, my personal website on social media, X, formerly Twitter, at View from Bunker, at Derek Gilbert, at gilberthouse underscore TV. Um, you'll find us on Facebook, the View from the Bunker page there. Give us a like and follow us there. Also, Truth Social, get me. We get her at Derek P. Gilbert and on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Gilbert House. If you're watching us on YouTube, thank you. Thank you. Please subscribe, smash the like button, and uh, click the bell for notifications. Then please, please download our free app that guarantees we never get canceled because the content is hosted on the Christian company that has developed the app for us. You'll find a uh, Versions for iOS, Android, and Amazon Kindle Fire phones and tablets. We've also got versions for Roku and Apple TV. Fire TV sticks still coming. And you'll find all of those linked at gilberthouse.org slash app. gilberthouse.org slash app. It's also available at uh, vftb.net. Well, if you watched the debate a week ago Thursday, you know that the performance by President Biden was historically bad. There's no other way to put it. And I don't say this with any joy because got a family member who is going through dementia and it's just really, really not fun to watch. It it is really unpleasant. Uh, It is a cruel disease that robs people of their personalities. We like to say that, uh, you know, she's sending her memories on ahead, talking about my mother who is 87 years old. So a few years into this further than, uh, than President Biden, what is... What was has been remarkable over the last week and a half is watching the mainstream media, the corporate media, that for the past three years has been telling us that, no, no, everything is fine. The president is just as sharp as a tech, although there were a few hints leading up to debate as they were trying to lower expectations, I think. The Wall Street Journal in particular, posting a story about um, insiders reporting that the president really isn't as sharp as we'd like to think he is, or we've because he is, you know, the uh, nominal leader of the free world. Um, After the event, uh, after the debate, of course, uh, he admitted, well, there's no way to deny it, that it was not his best night. But again, I will say this was the worst performance by a presidential candidate in a debate since the first televised debate in 1960 between Richard Nixon and John F. Kennedy. Well, the... uh, The Biden family had a meeting on Sunday, this past Sunday. It was thought that perhaps family members would try to talk the president out of continuing his campaign, but in fact, the opposite happened. Reportedly, Jill Biden insisted that he continue, or really, let's say, energetically argued that he should, Hunter Biden as well. And since then, the media has taken a different tack. It's like, well, okay. Maybe the president had a bad 90 minutes, but that doesn't mean he's not fit to be president. Um, There are still some Democrats behind the scenes. I mean, publicly, publicly, at least as of this recording, only one Democrat representative in Congress has publicly called for the president to step down or step aside. But behind the scenes, reportedly, people up to and including Barack Obama have been trying to persuade President Biden that the time has come. Now, the question, of course, is who takes his place because Kamala Harris, Vice President Harris, is polling even worse in head-to-head surveys against Donald Trump than President Biden. So Democrats don't want to lose. The never-Trumpers in the Republican Party don't want Trump to win. And so they're trying to figure out a way forward that can ease Vice President Harris out of the way without making it appear as though she's being passed over for a white guy, you know, Gavin Newsom or J.B. Pritzker. It appears that Michigan's governor, Gretchen Whitmer, is really navigating to try to take the, the center stage. Apparently, she sent a, a team secretly to Washington, D.C. in advance to start doing some groundwork. But then that word got out, so she had to publicly declare, no, no, I'm not behind it. I, I have nothing to do with the draft Gretch movement. How to appear loyal while you're <laughs> strategizing how to replace the president. Well, again, 
I, I have serious issues with the policies put forward by the Biden administration, but I think we can agree that after the performance on the debate stage a week ago Thursday, it is not Joe Biden who is putting forth those policies. He is not running the country, and frankly, we really as voters need to know who we're voting for if, in fact, we are voting for, for Joe Biden. If he remains on the ballot in November, who, who would Democrats actually be voting for? If people are voting against Donald Trump, who are they really voting for? Because it's not Joe Biden. And are they going to replace him with a vice presidential candidate that they can then put into office? Because, again, it appears that Kamala Harris is not going to be the first female president of the United States. Uh, again, the, the most amusing thing about all of this, if there is anything amusing, it's watching the performative surprise by the corporate media. <gasps> we had no idea the president's cognitive decline was... So yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. You you tried to gaslight us for three years. And, and frankly, this, this early date on this debate, this is the earliest presidential debate in history. Normally, they're held after the nominating conventions by the two major parties so that the candidates on stage are the official nominees instead of the presumptive nominees. This may have been to give the Democratic National Committee cover for replacing Joe Biden at the convention, although a story out today as I'm recording this from uh, Bloomberg is that the DNC may officially nominate President Biden in July before the convention, and they were planning to nominate him early anyway to make it official so they could beat the August 7th deadline to get him on the ballot in Ohio. This uh, nomination, which could take place as early as the 21st of July, may be to put down rebellion in the Democratic Party? Don't know. But again, all of this alleged surprise on the part of the corporate media. Really? <laughs> you guys knew. You just hoped that if you repeated the lie often enough, we out here in flyover country wouldn't notice. Bless your pointy little heads. Well, again, I want to tell you about uh, the upcoming event that David Hevner is um, the, the is is uh, hosting. I suppose. Well, actually, it's being hosted by Pastor Neil Peterson at the Harvest Revival Center in Brookville, Ohio. That's suburban Dayton. That is coming up Saturday, October or Saturday, July twentieth. Trying to find my notes here instead of working from memory, which mine doesn't work as well as it used to either. Anyway, July twentieth, coming up in just a couple of Saturdays. This will be a screening of episodes one and two. And you can be there. Uh, cast members will be there. Crew members will be there. There'll be a red carpet. Um, it's uh, kind of a different event to host at a church. But again, this is a different type of inspirational or Christian television series. More information at davidhefner.tv. And uh, if we can figure out how to beam in on the system there at... Uh, at uh, Pastor Neal's church, then uh, we will be honored to do so because I was happy to contribute my voice. Uh, we just couldn't work it into our schedule to get out there to Ohio, but uh, really, you know, face for radio. So better off with the better part of me anyway. Uh, and we will be there at Harvest Revival Center the following weekend for the Go Therefore conference. So hope you can join us there. That's Friday and Saturday, July 26th and 27th as uh, we will join L.A. Marzulli, Pastor Paul Begley, Dr. Judd Burton, Pastor Carl Gallops, Dr. Greg Reed, Joe Artis Horn, Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, and Thomas Dunn. Um, this is, uh, boy, everything from archaeology to um, the UFO phenomenon to medicine to... Joe Horn is going to talk about the upcoming Skywatch Films series, the Defender Films series, Rescue Us, about why we do what we do at Whispering Ponies Ranch. I'll be talking about the secret history of the creation or the restoration of Israel in the land. And I hope you will join us for that because uh, there's a lot of that history that is not familiar to most of us in the West. Guess what? It does not involve the Rothschilds, the Illuminati, or the Freemasons. In fact, there was a lot there, there were a lot of very powerful forces that were aligned against 
bringing Israel back into being in the 1930s and 1940s. And yet, Israel exists. So that'll be my talk. If you want to find out more, if you can join us in Ohio, great. If not, uh, it will be streamed. There will be video streaming. And you can find out more about that at gothereforeconference.com. That's gothereforeconference.com. Uh, in September, we'll be at the Pitchfork and Ho Gathering in Valley City, North Dakota. Was there last year. Had a wonderful time. So looking forward to getting back there for that. And uh, in October, Sharon is going to be a featured speaker at a conference being uh, put together by Hear the Watchmen. This is the Ignite Your Fire Women's Conference, October 4th, 5th, and 6th in Idaho Falls, Idaho. Sharon, one of the featured speakers, along with Heidi Begley, Sharon uh, Cluck, Jennifer, I'm going to make this larger, Jennifer Crate, Leslie Johnson, Lisa Keys, and Tracy Tennant, who just uh, relocated near us here in the Ozarks. Um, you want to find out more and join us for that? I'm looking forward to a conference where I can just go and watch my wife and not have to worry about giving a talk. That'll be great. Uh, again, October 4th, 5th, and 6th in Idaho Falls. More information and registration at hearthewatchmen.com. That's hearthewatchmen.com. Um, and, of course, our, our tour of Israel. Oh, by the way, I want to mention that uh, we are considering another solidarity mission to Israel in November. We're probably looking at November 7th through 13th. This would be a one-week tour to visit some of the sites attacked last October, to visit some important historical sites in Israel, both related to, uh, well, the restoration of Israel in, in 1948, but also to Israel's history, and also to the history of, well, huh, everything, like the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives, both historically and prophetically significant, the historic locations of the crucifixion and the burial tomb of Jesus, obviously then the site of the resurrection as well. We believe we've identified those, thanks to our good friend Rabbi Zev Porat. Um, you want to find out more? If you're interested in, in attending that and joining us for this one-week visit to Israel for that, uh, please drop us a note at info at gilberthouse.org, info at gilberthouse.org. Our tour of Israel next March, March 25th through April 3rd, with Timothy Alberino, Dr. Judd Burton, and Doug Van Dorn, still on. And you can get the latest information on that at uh, gilberthouse.org slash travel, gilberthouse.org slash travel. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to watch or listen wherever you're consuming this podcast. If you're watching on YouTube again, thank you. Subscribe, like, share with your friends, and then download our app. And then uh, if you're listening via Apple Podcasts, YouTube Music, Amazon Music, Audible, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, Pandora, wherever fine podcasts are sold. Again, thank you. Thank you for giving us your time this uh, this Sunday evening or whenever or wherever you might be. Our announcer, the inimitable, inimitable DC Good, a view from the bunkers of production of Gilbert House Ministries, released under Creative Commons Attribution, not commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Good night, Oliver, wherever you are. And please pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is A View from the Bunker.